there's something wrong with my Corvair. So today I'm going to try and figure out what it is. So here recently, uh, my Corvair has not been running that great. I had it running sweet. It would fire up real quick, it would idle great, it pulled, I mean, it was running really good. I was driving this every day back and forth to work. No problems. Um, then a couple weeks ago, I was coming home from work, uh, and mind you, it was running sweet on the way home. So I pulled away from an intersection, uh, as soon as it shifted into second gear, boom. I had zero power. It was like somebody had just flipped the switch to off. Luckily I was able to uh, coast off to the side of the road and um, start diagnosing some things. Um, cool thing about a Corvair station wagon is not a lot of people have seen them before, so a lot of people want to stop and talk about it. Luckily some of those people happened to own a shop just a block up and offered to help. Uh, they brought down some diagnostic equipment uh, that I had left in my garage and we kind of determined that the coil was my culprit. So uh, I went to the nearest auto parts store, uh, I ditched the old coil, and I got a new one. After I hooked up the new coil, the Corvair wagon fired right up, and I was on my way home, and it continued to run great, um, you know, for a few weeks after that. Uh, but then, I started to develop a rough idle, uh, and then sometimes, when I would go out to start it in the morning, it would take a very long time to get it started. Uh, this happened once or twice, and then until finally I went out to start it, and uh, it just would not start. I had like no spark again, just like when my coil had gone out. Um, so I pulled the new coil off, tested it, everything checked out right, had the right resistance, I was getting the right voltage. Um, so I thought, well, you know what? Let's take a point. Let's take a look at the uh, the contact breaker points. Now, if you don't know what contact breaker points are, uh, if you look inside of the distributor, you'll see a little thing that, you know, opens and closes like this as it rides on some cams on the distributor shaft. Um, over time, that opening and closing, it'll wear out the bumps, or the, the bump guide that's on the uh, distributor shaft that opens and closes it, so you have to adjust that frequently. Um, also, sometimes uh, there's a little, there's tungsten in between those two little fingers that over time can wear and burn. Um, so I figured, hey, let's replace these contact points. And while we're at it, there is a capacitor inside of there which lumps a spark, it's also called a condenser. So I replaced the, uh, the breaker points and the condenser in it. And then it seemed to come back into life. Uh, you know, the, uh, I had the dwell set. So dwell is the amount of time that those breaker points are closed. Um, it was a little, outside of the factory spec. Factory spec on a Corvair is 31 to 34 degrees of dwell. I was sitting right at 30. It was running good, but it wasn't running as great as it was. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'll leave it. These points will wear in and eventually I will get into that sweet 31 to 34 uh, degree dwell zone. Uh, but then it died at a stoplight and I had trouble getting it started. I had to push it off the road into a church parking lot where it sat for maybe five minutes and then boom, it fired right up again. So, hmm, wondering what these problems are. Uh, so again, I checked the fuel pressure and all that. Fuel pressure seems fine. Uh, it seems like I'm getting fuel to the carburetor, no issue. Uh, so I'm thinking, got to be ignition. So then I start throwing parts at it. I replace the plug wires, replace the cap, the distributor cap, replace the distributor rotor. I got new breaker points, I've got new condenser. Um, doing all that. And then I thought, maybe let's fine tune those points. Again, I got it to run decent, but the idle wasn't great. It just wouldn't idle. So now I'm at a loss. Not quite sure what's going on. Uh, I did have a similar problem on uh, my motorcycle, my 1977 Yamaha XS360. I would have the same issue. I couldn't get it to idle or I couldn't get it to start at all. And uh, 
that was such a problem with my motorcycle that I kind of left it and I let it sit for about five years. I just didn't feel like going back to it. Now, some of my other vehicles do have breaker points. Uh, my, uh, my Volkswagen Beetle has breaker points and uh, my wife's MG Midget has breaker points. Uh, I can get those dialed in really good. They're perfectly within spec and they don't give me any trouble. In fact, I haven't had to mess with those for a few years. Uh, and the Dwell is right within spec for those cars and it, they never have any issues starting up. Uh, so now I'm kind of wondering what's going on here. And now mind you, those two cars, I did use a breaker set that was a new old stock. So my Volkswagen Beetle, I'm using some new old stock Bosch units. And on the MG Midget, I'm using a new old stock Lucas unit. Um, so you could argue that those are a better quality breaker point set. Uh, but on my motorcycle, because uh, I couldn't get the breaker point set for a 77 Yamaha, or a 76, I'm sorry, it's a 76 Yamaha XS360, um, couldn't get new breaker points for them, but I was able to go to Pamco, uh, they make electronic ignitions for a lot of motorcycles, and they made an electronic ignition for a Yamaha XS400, which is very similar to the 360. I wired that in, and now my Yamaha fires first or second kick like it's it runs sweet with that electronic ignition so now I'm thinking let's try the same thing out with the Corvair so I went out and I got this which is really really cool uh, so this is a fast XR 700 electronic ignition setup uh, but it's not like Hall effect or magnetic sensor like most are um, this one actually uses uh, an optical sensor which I think is really cool. Uh, so there's a little LED light in here and then you have this little wheel that goes on your distributor. And there's little windows in it and as they pass over the light, the light shines through, tells it when to fire. Uh, this is a very, very reliable system from what I've heard. It's very popular in the Corvair community. Uh, and you know, I figure it's, it's about a hundred bucks, which is, I think is good, good value. Uh, and it's a simple install. They say it takes, you know, half hour for somebody experienced to change it all over. So we're going to install this on my Corvair today. I'm going to show you what I need to do, how it's done. Step one is to remove the distributor cap. Now we can remove the rotor and the dust shield if your distributor has one. This reveals the contact breaker points and the condenser. We will remove those and give ourselves a bare distributor. Now we can find the correct uh, optical trigger wheel that will fit onto our distributor shaft. Don't force it down at this point. Use the distributor rotor to push it down and fully seat it onto the shaft. This prevents any damage to the ring of the trigger wheel. Now we can install the optical sensor using the supplied brackets in the kit. The bracket uses the same mounting holes as the contact points. Now you'll have to adjust the optical sensor because we need to locate the trigger wheel centered vertically within the optical sensor. This provides the right amount of light hitting the sensor so we can have the correct ignition. Next, using your favorite color zip tie, secure the wiring for the optical sensor so it won't catch on anything inside of your distributor. Reinstall your distributor cap and that will conclude the distributor portion of the electronic ignition install. Now the ignition box can be wired up. Yellow goes to the negative side of your coil. Red goes to the positive side of your coil. And of course black goes to a ground. Now we can plug in the optical sensor from the distributor to the ignition control box, ensuring that the uh, colors on the wires match gray to gray, white to white, black to black. With the wiring done, all that is left is to switch the ignition to on and see if we have power. The red LED will indicate we have power to the ignition control box. Looks good. I think all that's left is to see if it'll start. It's starting a lot easier with this new electronic ignition. It's running okay, but the idle does seem a little bit low. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the idle speed. I'm going to increase it a half turn each time, moving from one carburetor to the other. Make sure that whatever you do to one carburetor, you do to the other. Keep track of how many half turns you're doing. Keep doing this until you get a smooth idle. Now that it's a little bit smoother, I'm going to hook up uh, some test equipment, but if you have a tachometer installed in your car, uh, you can just reference your tachometer to get the correct idle speed. I'm going to use my old Sears Dwell tach meter to fine tune the idle speed. The 69 engine in this car calls for 600 RPM in drive or about 800 to 900 RPM in neutral. The next step is to ensure that you have the correct ignition timing. Be sure to remove the vacuum line from the vacuum advance canister on the distributor and plug the vacuum line to eliminate any vacuum leaks before you check your ignition timing. Using a timing light with the lead connected to the number one spark plug wire, ensure that you have the correct ignition timing. This engine calls for 18 degrees before top dead center at idle. With the engine running nice and smooth, we can now permanently install the ignition control box. Mount the ignition control box away from engine heat. Tucked up under here looks nice. Keeping the box away from engine heat will increase its longevity and its reliability. With the air cleaners reinstalled, I can make sure that it'll still start and idle smoothly. Now check that it's still idles smoothly in drive. Seems good. Well, it certainly sounds a lot better. Uh, it took me a little bit more than a half hour or an hour. Um, mostly because I want to make sure we're going to get it right and uh, I also had to make a little bracket to fit on that distributor I didn't show that but it didn't come in the kit mostly because I didn't buy the right kit for a Corvair but I figure one teeny little bracket's not going to stop me from making it work uh, sounds good it's already starting a whole lot better than it did so I think we did it All this stuff too is now take it for a test drive and see if all the things fit. Well, I think that sounds good. Starts fine, idles okay in park, and as we're cruising, there's no surging or sputtering. It's all nice and smooth. So I think we did it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit. I know I did. Uh, but I'm going to keep cruising, and I'll report back with any issues. Until then, stay tuned.